Hello and welcome everyone, we're back with another chapter review of Undead and Luck. This week we're back with chapter 208 entitled, Could It Be? Now last week there wasn't a chapter review and I actually didn't know that there wasn't going to be a chapter out last week. It actually worked out perfectly because I'm going to be honest with you guys, I was not going to be able to put out a chapter review last week. I was completely messed up from the weekend I had. But yeah, I'm glad that there wasn't a chapter review so I didn't leave you guys hanging. I mean, if I wasn't too messed up, I probably would have tried to do some kind of other video but it worked out how it worked out. I did actually do a live stream a bit earlier on Sunday. I don't know if I'll put this out on Sunday. I did say the live stream will probably be out on Monday. So I did live stream yesterday. Uh, you could probably check that out if you want. Just me playing some EAFC. I'm planning on doing a series with EAFC. And I want to try and do some more gameplay streams. So if you're interested in that, you can check out my live channel tab. But anyway, back to the chapter, it actually starts off with a nice colour page. In the colour page, it's actually Mui, Fuko and Latla imagining some of the union members in a band. So as it looks now, it looks like we got like Rip doing the main vocals, then we got Teller on the bass, uh, we got, I don't know what Shen's doing, he's doing a kick, he's just like pointing at someone in the ground, he's probably like the pretty boy of the group, uh, and we got Billy in the back on the drums. It's very funny, we see Latla, she's just drooling, I guess she's just drooling over the imagination of uh, Rip with his shirt off, just singing his how uh, being an idol essentially. And uh, yeah, Moy's just kind of like shyly fawning over like, Shen probably, but Fuko has the face of like the producer manager type, just thinking how can I make money off these guys kind of thing. All in all, it's a pretty cool colour page and it relays back to what happens later on in this chapter. So the chapter starts out proper with Fuko apologising to Sean because in the Battle for Language he had to give up his seat so that Feng could become a part of the Union. She tries to explain her rationale saying she doesn't know when the next quest is going to be dropped so she didn't know which member she could just get rid of. And so Sean basically takes that as her saying, oh, he's just expendable then, which is kind of what she is saying. Well, obviously Fuko doesn't mean it like that. But Sean just tells her to drop it anyway and ask why does she need his help. So Fuko does explain to Sean that her mother's apparently an idol and she should be at the concert that they're going to to prevent Unchase ability manifesting in a tragic way. But she says she realises that the concert might be dangerous so she wants to meet her mother beforehand in like more of a safe ground I guess. Fuko also says that she's kind of afraid of running into her so she wants Sean to use Unseen. And she says she doesn't want to run into her and at the bottom of her speech box it says for paradox reasons. And I'll just put that on hold for now because it does come up again in later on in the chapter. And yeah, and whilst Fuko's trying to plead her case to Sean, I'm pretty sure he stopped listening after the word idols because he says, Idols, cute, can your mom introduce me to some? And yeah, Sean's really a ladies man. All it takes is a mention of some women to like get him out of the rut he was just in the, like a few seconds ago. And although I'm sure that is a part of it, but I'm pretty sure since like Fuko brought up that it's her mum that Sean really just wanted to help Fuko out as well. But he's obviously got to play it off in a way that Sean like. So they finally head off on their way and they get to a cafe where Fuko's mum apparently works. Fuko is hesitant to go in and she brings up an important fact that it's actually been 200 years since she's seen her mum, which is insane to imagine. Imagine you haven't seen a friend or your mum or family member in 200 years. It's going to be really weird seeing them again, especially knowing the fact that they won't know you. So yeah, I can see why Fuko needs a bit of time to digest and actually go through with this. But Sean is pretty gung-ho about it. He says you gotta meet who you want to meet and talk to who you want to talk to while you have the chance. Because when it comes to people, you'll never know when's the last time you're going to see them. And to be honest, this point with Sean really resonates with me. And if you're listening right now, you should think about this point too. And you should take it on board because you never know the last time you'll speak to someone. So if you really want to speak to someone, pick up the phone and call them. And if they didn't pick up, go to the last address you knew they lived at and go knock on their door. And if they're still not there, I don't know, man. You can figure out a way. The internet's a huge, wonderful place. Go on social media and find them. And speak to who you need to speak to because you don't want to have that moment where you wish you could speak to them again. And you don't want to have that regret of not speaking to them when you could have. But anyway, they decide to enter the cafe and we see Fuko's mum in the flesh. She's actually the striking image of Fuko, or should I say Fuko's the striking image of her since she is the mother. Like, to be honest, I'm trying to play spot the difference between their faces and they look pretty dissimilar. Like, I guess Fuko's got a bit of a smaller face, um, like there's wrinkles on their eyes. Fuko's got like three, but she has like two. 
but yeah, they look pretty similar. They are mother and daughter. So they all get seated and her mother's uh, serving them. And whilst Fuko is uh, thinking, wow, this is actually my mother, her mum actually trips and falls and spills drinks all over them. They actually think it's a stroke of unluck, but Fuko says she didn't activate any unluck. I don't think they had an opportunity to touch each other. Fuko's mum is just really unlucky. Maybe not unlucky, just more clumsy, really. Because it seems even the owner of the store was telling her, I told you, only bring one out at a time. <laughs> Whilst Fuko's mum's like getting all their faces sorted with the clean towels and stuff, she notices Fuko and she says her face looks familiar. And I'm thinking, bitch, that's your face. <laughs> but yeah, she doesn't say anything because uh, someone walks into the door. Fuko's mum turns to greet the new person coming in and just straight away does a tumbling axe splash kick as Sean calls it. So essentially what's happening is from Fuku mom's slip, she's doing this kind of like tumbling kick that's coming down towards this person. But she also has some water that was on the tray she was holding, so that's splashing against him as well. But he instinctively just pulls out like a flannel or some kind of cloth, tablecloth, and splashes the water out the way and deflects it. And then he just sidesteps out the way of her like kick that's coming down and is able to just catch and grab her. But what he didn't expect was the tray that went flying as well, falling and hitting him directly on the head. Interestingly, right before the tray actually hit him, Sean says that he amazingly reacted out of impulse to all of that. But Fuko seems to think that his actions weren't based on impulse. And it turns out Fuko's fault was correct because he's been through this before actually. He says he thought he dodged them all this time round, implying this kind of thing has happened to him before. So yeah, he's probably a regular customer at this cafe and gets served by Fuko's mum all the time. And yeah, Fuko's mum being how she is, these kind of things, you just gotta adapt to it or perish. And I have a thought now, because of how Fuko's mum is with all this clumsiness and unlucky stuff happened to her all the time, it makes me wonder, is that the reason that the previous users of Unluck chose Fuko? Because she was already around someone who caused all this kind of weird, unlucky stuff to happen anyway. And they thought, hopefully, that it won't affect her life too much because they should be used to her mum being all this kind of unclumsy person. Like, it wouldn't be too much of a detriment to her. She'd be like, oh, it's just how life goes with the unlucky wackiness going on. But it also make me wonder why didn't they just give it to Fuko's mum instead? Maybe they had a reason of just like, oh, she causes unluck for herself already, so she doesn't want, so they don't want to give it to her so that she causes unluck for people she loves as well, because she's already doing all these things that's unlucky. They don't want to like amplify that, but giving it to someone close to her just like compliments her natural unluckiness anyway, kind of thing, if you get what I mean. But yeah, I think it will be really interesting if that's the reason why Fuku was chosen as the next negator of unluck. But anyway, back to the chapter. Sean is telling Fuku he needs to go over there and uh, talk to her mum. But Fuku's telling him about it could cause a paradox. And he's like, that's to do with time travel. You're just in a fresh new loop, so it should be all right. And this is what I was talking about early on in the chapter when she said paradox reasons. I was like, this isn't time travel. There should be no paradox. You're just in a new loop. And I was trying to remember, like, with the Julia situation, I think for her specific situation that she was born into a new family. But I don't know if we covered the scenario of Foucault's in. Like, she was born in the last loop, but now she's traveled the arc, and she is she going to be born again in this loop, or is it going to be a different Fuko? Is she just not going to be born? And there's still more questions by the end of this chapter, to be honest. So they overhear Fuko's mom telling this person that, although she gave him tickets to the upcoming festivals, she won't be performing. And it turns out that all of her backing band has got some kind of injury or illness or some reason that they can't perform. Then we see Fuko starting to fade away. Fuko then begins to have a memory of asking her parents where they started dating. And yeah, essentially we learn, yeah, they started dating at a certain festival, a certain concert. And Fuko comes to the conclusion that her birth hinges on this upcoming festival. And so she goes up to her mum and asks her to give her more information about her backing band. And so Fuko makes the call to the union members all around the world, from Russia, the United States, there are some even in China, and basically asks for her help to replace the backing band, otherwise she'll disappear. And this is where the chapter ends off. Things are getting very interesting right now. 
Because why on earth is Fuko disappearing? Like Sean said, this is a new loop, not time traveling. I didn't expect her parents not meeting to cause her to not exist anymore. And even if they didn't go to the, that concert, they obviously are talking to each other and they seem to like each other. Why would just going to a concert be the only thing that made you be in a relationship and have a child? But anyway, I don't understand how the Fuku's disappearing, but all we have to do is accept that she is if this concert doesn't happen with uh, her mum. And I want to bring some attention to her mum's previous backing band, like how they mysteriously all got these injuries out of nowhere. To me, it seems like someone is trying to make Fuku not exist. The rules are probably doing something so that Fuku doesn't exist anymore because they can obviously see with her as the head of the union, they have a real shot at defeating God and it's becoming a real threat right now. So they need to take her out some way or somehow. So I would not be surprised to see some kind of master rule involvement in this operation or some other kind of rule involvement. Someone doing something to try and stop Fuku and her dad from meeting. And I'm pretty sure in the chapter I never actually confirmed this, but it's pretty sure it's confirmed that that guy that came in that uh, Fuko's mom is talking to is Fuko's dad. We didn't actually get to see his face in the flashback when Fuko was thinking about when she asked him when where they first met or started dating even. But yeah, it's pretty obvious that this guy's probably Fuko's dad. And there is one last more thing I want to point out before I end this video is that Fuko has some tape on her face, so get ready for a huge amount of unlock being unloaded at some point in this arc maybe maybe it won't even be used in this arc because it seems like a pretty tame arc you don't think we're gonna want a huge amount of unlock while there's a huge concert of people going around but look out for that tape on her face she's gonna release some unlock onto someone and it's gonna be a huge amount but yeah that's all i have for this one guys thanks for watching if you made it all the way here and i will see you later